Welcome to the lounge and the uh, commodities report and starting with the uh, US dollar here and the purpose for that is just to point out that uh, there is a top of wave three in play here and uh, weaker uh, US dollar, uh, stronger commodities and we are seeing uh, support come into a lot of the commodities at the moment. Um, in many cases we can't confirm if we're looking at corrective moves up or uh, trending impulsive uh, moves to the upside but uh, let's make a start. So with gold here we've got a, um, a spike below the 1200 just starting with the daily chart here. And it is possible that, uh, and we'll explore this in a moment, but uh, it's possible uh, that we've got wave five of three in here and we're looking for wave four to pull back into wave four of one lesser degree through here, 1220, 1230, maybe even a tad higher, and then wave five down into, well, close to 1150 sort of area through here to complete five wave structure from uh, up the top here. So that's what we're sort of looking at. Uh, this little structure down through here, we need to confirm that that's finished. And with this strong move up here, um, it does create that uh, that possibility, but we still need to confirm it in, in well, in a couple of ways. <clears throat> One of them would be uh, moving through 210, which would be the low of this little wave one here. So a nice move, nice solid move through 210 would uh, help confirm that we've got this low in place. Otherwise, this would be a, uh, just a large wave four rally that's 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 um that's rallied too far um but we've seen that before uh we've seen these sort of spikes before so uh we just need to give it a little bit of time the other point too is that uh you know support on the 1200 here would also help you know tested support would help confirm this low being in place here and you know would see a wave four move back to the way four of one lesser degree so to speak anywhere up here would do but all the wave fours have been sh falling a little bit short of their retracement level so we can't expect too much to to the upside here so uh yeah and just drilling in here a little bit further through here we can see that this little move down through here is is an impulse wave and could be labeled as wave one so a nice move through here would uh cancel that out and create a positive move so with a positive move to the upside we'd see uh something a little bit like this here would be looking at a five wave structure up through here an a and a b and a c here and then another move up through to here somewhere like this but uh yeah so we'll be looking for a three wave structure here uh five waves three waves and five waves here uh if it was going to be any more than that then we'd work that out along the way but um we'd be looking at uh, overlapping wave structures coming in through here which would help confirm that this would be a, a corrective move to the upside we're seeing the same in silver as well but silver's made a little bit more headway here in terms that uh, its move up through here is this is you know appears to be an impulse wave to the upside here with a third wave in the middle here it's already moved up here so we can assume that uh, we are, have started uh, with the gold uh, larger wave four uh, so and this would be the same case here so we're looking for three waves up here we've got the a wave to here the B wave and then a C wave up through to here. So it's really uh, a market for uh, scalpers at this stage, unless we can uh, get some evidence a little bit later on as this develops into a larger uh, impulse wave. Uh, but um, yeah, look, buying pullbacks uh, here for scalpers would be uh, the course of action. The copper market too, the base metals has been following precious metals to the downside and uh, we're seeing support uh, here and it's a little bit of a tricky wave count here this is just the daily chart we've been over this many times here but we're basically looking for a wave three down here uh, as such so that's sort of in play here so from wave two here we're looking at wave one and two we had this large spike here as wave two here as well but we but we st it still counts as five waves right down to this little point here so we're looking at wave four pulling back to the 38.2 retracement level which is uh 307 and uh yeah so this is what we we're counting uh, all through last week and we we're looking for uh, a move up into uh well 308 but i've adjusted that to 307 not that it's a big deal but 
Um, yeah, let's just see how this develops here. This current move up here is in three waves here. So if we just drill in to this here for a moment, we've got one, two, and three here. So basically it's corrective at this stage. Uh, it can develop further into five waves. Uh, we just need to see how that goes. But if we do get five waves here, if I can just get my little drawing tool out here, we've got uh, one here, two here, three here. If we get four and five here, then you know that we'll get an A and a B and a C, and then we'll get another five here as well. So that's kind of what I'm thinking and looking at, and currently we're just uh, here. So let's see how we go here. But this is interesting because it will give support to the XMJ, the material sector in, well, talking about Australia, and that would be at 9,000. Of course, that will come in for BHP at its current lows as well, and um, <clears throat> those other markets, uh, other other uh, stocks within that uh, sector there could find uh, <clears throat> short-term lows there. The uh, oil market, <clears throat> there's two counts that, 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 that we've got here that need to be uh, accommodated. Um, the other count you can see on the four-hour chart in the Elliott Wave section, and essentially that's, you know, we've been basically looking for wave two here, I won't go into the bigger picture, but we've come all the way down for wave one, and we're looking for some type of corrective pattern for wave two here. And we've, you know, I know that we've changed it around a little bit, but that's the thing with corrective patterns. They, um, <clears throat> obviously we're seeing a, a quite a weak uh, wave two here. Um, and, you know, we expected it to, to move back up to sort of 98 or, or 100, you know, that, that sort of area. But it's not doing that. It's sinking into 90 here. Um, but what we're sort of considering now is that um, <clears throat> that this wave two is not sort of completed yet. So we'd be looking for wave <clears throat> at basically an A and a B and a C for wave A here. And then wave B down to here in three waves here because we do have three waves and then wave C up through to here. Now, our original count that we've been working with here, where we were, last time we spoke, we were looking for a 50, 60% retracement level into 92 here, um, as long as it stayed under that level there, because we, we can count this as one and two and one and two. And we can also do this too. We can also count this as one and two, but we can't take the top here out. If we take this top out here, then we know that we'll be heading up through here. So um, a little bit tricky. We just don't know until it sort of reveals itself. But uh, as it stands, uh, this this as the A wave here, the B wave to here, and the uh, and the C wave back up here in five waves. So we'd be looking at uh, from this low here. This is one and two and three and four and five here, rallying with the other commodities, and then down from that point there as well. So. I know we got a short position in at uh, 91.50 uh, here, so uh, you could probably put the uh, stop at 91.37 area, at least get to sort of break even here as well. But support back on the 90 uh, is like, I wouldn't jump the gun of getting out too quick. You want to get a nice tested support on 90 before, um, before bailing out of this short position here because it can still fail from here. Um, and yeah, we just need to take one logical step at a time. So tested support on 90, uh, get there on the intraday and, and have, a, have a look at that. Um, but you know, otherwise, uh, if the 89 becomes the retested resistance, we want to add to a position and we want to add to a position at 88 as well at retested resistance as well. Um, so if we don't catch it here, then we have to catch it back up here. We're not going to give up on it because it's a it's a third wave to the downside and it's got a lot of potential there. We just need to, you know, build very small positions in, in, in there in the leg and we don't, you know, we don't want to miss it. So, uh, but as I mentioned before, it can take, these situations can take, you know, two or three times to get uh, into the uh, trend. So, uh, yeah. Alrighty, um, off to the soft commodities, the grains, and starting with soybeans here. Now we had um, we've been stopped out of our short positions, and we we're expecting that to occur. And in this particular case here, because we had the 1,000 uh, quite quite away here, and we'll probably be looking at a retest into this sort of area here. Um, 
we're using uh, weekly robo system one where where system one reverses the position so we've basically gone from a this we've come up through this this bar here um, so it's taken out our our, our, um, our short positions I had a stop here and then it's putting us long here uh, so a few points above this particular bar here this is uh, uh, 929 so 931 is is reasonably you know safe point to 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 enter and then uh, putting the stop I've just put the stop under this bar technically it should go under this one but that's fine at this stage now we don't know if we've got the end of a uh, a bear market here or we're just looking at a corrective move here uh, we'll we'll see but um, we'll probably be looking to add on to next week's bar here if we get a nice bar here and we get a new high coming through here we'll look to uh, add to that position there as well uh, in terms of the wave count here uh, it's it's quite possible to have a have a low in place here in terms of wave one here wave two three four and five coming down here this has always been our original count I do have another count here that gives this a little wave four rally. It basically fades pretty much where it is and then creates another low here to complete it. Um, but this one here suffice as well. And this one here also fits with um, uh, some of the other uh, grains as well, which we'll be looking at in a moment, the wheat and the corn. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's all good. So uh, well, that's okay. The wheat market, that was the other count. So the wheat market's the same <coughs> as well, but we haven't used weekly robo system one here. We're just staying with weekly robo system two, and um, we've been stopped out here at 493. And we haven't gone long because we're facing uh, the, the big number 500 there. So we would look to go long uh, perhaps if we got support on top of 500, but um, uh, for, for this exercise here we'll just uh we'll just stand aside we've got enough risk on uh soybeans and uh corn at the moment but the wave count down here as well um from wave four here we've got wave one wave two wave three we're looking for wave four to come back into 510 500 510 and then wave five down through through this little area here. So this may not complete it unless I've labeled wave four wrong. But when I look at corn, um, corn seems to be, um, we've gone, uh, we'll look at the corn wave count in a minute. It's, it's also got a very good opportunity of actually being completed here as well. And that means that the soybean could be completed and the wheat wouldn't be far off that as well. We are seeing, other commodities uh, push higher as well in impulsive structure, especially uh, coffee. Um, but anyway, this this market here, we've been short down through here, and we uh, decided last week that um, we would look at this in terms of not weekly robo two, but weekly robo one, and also reverse the position on this high here as well. And that's uh, what we've done. So we're out of it. We've been stopped out of our shorts. Uh, we're long now at 327. And I've put a stop under the three, under this bar here, which is basically 320, 322. Um, but I've put it at 316. Um, yeah, and we'll also look to add on to this next week as well. We've got no big numbers here stopping us. If we get support on 430, then we can set our target at 350 at that point there. So that will be that will be the uh, uh, the, the point that we need to to observe. I'm just trying to find another ch the, the wave count chart here. So in in this particular market here, we've been counting all this down through here as wave one and two, nice strong third wave down here, nice fourth wave. And then we've been counting, and this is quite, I'm happy with this count actually down here in this five wave structure down through here. So that's why I was thinking that we've got some sort of low in place here. And, um, you know, we can look at a, a much larger rally. And finding, uh, getting out of group one here, 10, 20 and 30 is important. So finding support on 30 here is the next step that we're actually sort of looking at and we'll keep our stop here. And we, we will look to add to positions on new 
weekly highs or supports on certain uh, certain levels here. Um, but yeah, look, there's risk at buying uh, on the low here, and it's not normally something that I do. But in this this particular system that we're tracking, that's what it does. It turns, uh, you know, it'd be turning on lows and highs, and and we need to uh, basically move our positions in line with that as well. So that's what we're doing there. The coffee market, um, <clears throat> I like. Um, this is the weekly chart here, and what we've been looking for here. Uh, is support on top of 200 here and <coughs> we don't uh, we, we don't have tested support here so far but we do have one of uh, Gand thing here he would say that on the fourth on a triple top which is one two and I would include those both together here because they're per part of the same structure uh, so we've got one two three here in the fourth time it normally pushes through and it's pushing through quite strongly here as well in terms of an impulse wave so when we're looking at uh, that uh, I've I've labeled this late wave two here uh, with with all of this as well. So wave one here and wave two over here. It it might be that um, we've got wave uh, um, we've got this blue wave here as wave one over here. But I don't think that's the case. When I look at London chart, if I give you London here for a moment, the London coffee, it's at two thousand here. It's much more practical here in this particular case that I can see that this is an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave. It's basically a correction across this particular level, and now it's moving off. And we're not trading this particular market. I mean, you certainly can. It's the same same pattern, basically. Uh, you know, same, 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 same. Uh, so, yeah, but coming back here, what, we, what I decided to do is just call this wave two here for the time being and just start counting our, our wave structures up here. So uh, as you know, we wanted to wait until we got to 200 to get a, to get above that, but we want to get an order at 200, 210, 220, and 230. We are looking for support on 230, and then um, we won't do any adding beyond that, but we'll, we will add on 250 support up here. But coming back to this picture here, basically, um, we're looking to trade from 200 to 300 here. That's our that's our aim. We want to build in into group one here, the 10, 20, and 30. We'll add on 50. We know that there's going to be a correction at the 50 here. A reason possibly it, we have to expect it and accommodate it, and um, uh, that can fluctuate from 265 back down to 240, 230. Um, we need to accommodate whatever happens there and then look to add on 250 and then move up from that point. Now, I also need to point out too that I don't know if we've got wave one here, wave two here, and then going up for wave three, or we've got a larger corrective move, which would be the A wave, the B wave, and the C wave. It doesn't matter at this point in time. We will see, we will, should be able to work it out along the way, depending how quickly this moves up here. If it's a wave three, it will move very quickly. Um, if it's a wave C, it will become quite lazy on the way up. So anyway, we're counting up through here. We're looking at wave three being uh, up around the 230 uh, area through here. You can see that it's moving off really quite nicely through here. Uh, so we'd have a one and two, possibly a three and four in here. And we're looking for a little five wave structure up into this little area through here. So it's all going pretty much according to, to, to plan here. Uh, we can expect a larger correction for wave four here at the 230 area here. And also at the 230 area here, um, we could see a move to 240. Um, if there's headline news, it might spike to 250 and come back. But norm, the norm is to like 235, 238 area, maybe 240, and then back into 220, and then sort of use the 230 as a balance line across here. So we can expect a move up here, then back, and then across, basically sort of diminishing in to that balance line of 230 and then moving up from there. So in terms of adding to the position at 230, it doesn't really matter where we do. We're going to be leaving the stop well out of the way anyway. But once we've got the top of the third wave in, then I'll bring our stops up a little bit closer to, to this area through here. But uh, simply don't overtrade. And, you know, there's a long way to go with this. The sugar market, um, I'm just observing it at this stage. Uh, the 
I've looked at the sort of historical sort of picture of all of this, and it does it does still seem a bit corrective, um, uh, uh, bearish. But um, uh, if we're going to be looking at any sort of uh, impulse wave up here, then I would need to see. I want to see more of this action here. So the coffee and the sugar should run together. Um, Let's just see how they go. So at this stage, I'm just calling it an A and a B and a C that will go into this block of supply uh, here. As such, the 50% retracement levels here into that supply area, the 61.8 is closer to the 18 here. Um, but wave A here and wave C have normally got a quality. If that's the case, well then $17, $17.20 would be about the limit of this uh, corrective move. So if we see a nice support on $17, uh, and uh, a nice wave structure, then we could go long from there. If you're already long from 1650, <coughs> that's fine too. But all I'm saying is that I don't know if we're going to get a larger impulse wave here or we're just working in a corrective move here into this supply area here and then fail from here. I don't know that just yet. So, um, yeah, I can't can't say or do too much on that one just yet. I know that we've, we'll be trading a lot of the other, we've got, you know, soybeans and corn, we're taking from the lows, we're uh, into coffee at the moment. So we, we do have some there already, we have enough. Uh, so it don't, we don't need to do them all as such. Uh, the cotton market, it's, it's, it's interesting that um, it's moved back up. So what we're kind of looking for here is uh, a five wave structure down through here. And we were looking pretty much always for it to sort of complete into 60 uh, area here. The move up through here so far, it's it can be counted as corrective or impulsive. Now, uh, in the bigger picture here as well, uh, not that you can see it very clearly here on this one here, but we do have a high up here. So it is possible that all of this is down for wave one here and then wave two back up to here and then we've got all this down here as wave three here. Now, if that's the case, then we would be looking at a wave four here. So a wave four back to here, then a wave five down to this point here. So that's that's plausible as well. Um, but, you know, it, it can also run as well. So I think what we'll do is we will look at the structure once it's above the uh, the 65 here and if we've got support on the 65 we'll glean a small position there and we'll just sit with that small position it's a, it's a risk position but we'll we'll sit with it and then we'll look to see if this structure is going to uh, be moving higher and then we'll be looking to add on top of 68 and then 70 uh, on the way up through there if that's going to be the case the let me just have a look at the the structure to the upside. The structure to the upside, um, it's just too early to work out if it's corrective or if it's impulsive. You know, we can count this up as wave one here. We've got a nice five waves here, an A and a B and a C for wave two here, then one and two, and all this is just the third wave here. So there's gonna be time for it to build uh, up here. I mean, you could you could get a position now, in fact, because, um, uh, you know, because it's going to go higher anyway. I can see that it's got further to go here. We just don't normally buy under uh, under sort of levels. We wait for support, but it's not going to do that much harm here because it's only going to be a small position. So if you do want to get a small position here, and I do mean small, you know, sort of the sort of thing that you need to sort of not forget about, but it shouldn't it shouldn't concern you at, at, at all if. Um, uh, if we get stopped out because we would end up if we bought here we would have our stops down here somewhere just below 62 out of the way here uh, and then we'll be looking to, to, to build the trade later but we need to get past this fifth wave here so we need to see three four and five for the third the fourth and the fifth then we need to see an a and a b and a c and then then a move up from that point there as well so uh yeah i just can't I can't work it out just yet. We need to see more more structure, but it's not going to hurt to get a small position that we can uh, add to uh, there. I'll leave that with you. Uh, the orange juice market, not a lot of um, movement here either in terms of um, uh, our little wave count that, that we've been uh, tracking through here. I mean, it's been very time consuming, as you know, but we've been tracking it pretty well spot on and we'll be looking for wave C up through to here. This wave C does bother me a little bit because it does appear that we've got a five wave structure down through here. So if you see a, a breach 
of the 140 here, nice clean breach here, then look to short on the retest here because that means that we've actually started our thing to the downside here. Um, if I've made a mistake here, then it's just going to get more complicated and the mistake would be that this would be the A wave, the B wave and the C wave here for wave four. So I would have to move this over to here and this to here and this is wave one here and then we start the A, the B and the C here. This is also possible as well because it just appears that I've got five wave structure here rather than three waves here. Um, but anyway, it doesn't really matter just yet. We've got enough to enough to do and um, yeah, but like I say, if there's a nice clean break through the 140, you could set a position up at um, just below 138. So. Uh, so, so you capture it if, if you like, um, yeah, but otherwise we're still looking for a corrective move back up here uh, and, and then a move down through here. So, alrighty, uh, that's it. All right, thanks for tuning in.